The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Makers of the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices, those perfect slices of extra mellow-tasting pasteurized processed cheese. When you shop tomorrow, look in your grocer's dairy case for those neat square packages marked Kraft Deluxe Slices. As neat as they are, every package holds eight big slices of delicious processed cheese. Eight perfect slices that are cut, wrapped, and sealed for you by Kraft. So remember to look for those handy packages and try all five grand kinds of Kraft Deluxe Slices. Well, let's see what's doing at the great Gildersleeve's house this morning. Little Leroy is just knocking on his uncle's door, and by the tone of his voice, he's trying to get out of something. Unc! Yes, Leroy? Come in. Thanks, Unc. I don't have to be in the Summerfield Centennial, do I? You what's this, my boy? They're auditioning all the school kids for the pageant. They want me to be a singing Indian. A singing Indian? Well, Leroy, I think you'd make a fine Indian. Are you kidding? I don't have to sing, do I, Unc? Do I? No, Leroy, why not? I'd just be wasting their time and my time. No, you wouldn't, my boy. You don't think so? By the moon of the sky, blue waters. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You'd be wasting your time. <laughs> Keen, I don't have to do it, huh, Unc? Well, I think you should offer to be in it. You can't carry a tune, but you might carry a hatchet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> be in the old pageant. No, Leroy, this centennial is going to be quite a thing. There's an article here in the newspaper about the pageant. Pageant's magic. Here, listen to this. The city is agog over the approaching celebration. It was 100 years ago that Captain Otto K. Summer planted the barrel of his trusty squirrel gun in our soil and said, I dub thee Summerfield. Oh, brother. My teacher says they're even going to have a guy out there dressed like Captain Summer singing. Yes, I'll have to have somebody impersonate him. That'll be the leading role. You say, let me read this again. Is squirrel gun ourselves. Auditions are being held at... Well, excuse me, Leroy, I have to go. Where are you going? Captain Otto K. Summer is going to the audition. In the land of the sky, blue water. What a character. Well, I didn't do badly on the audition. Nice fellow, that pageant producer. I could tell I impressed him, too. He smiled when I hit that high note. Me, 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 me. Gildersleeve, you're dynamite. <laughs> yeah, sure, he'll pick me for the title role. I think I'll stop in the barber shop and let Floyd meet Captain Otto K. Summer. Well, if it ain't the water commissioner. Hello, Floyd. Hop right up in the chair, commissioner. Well, I don't need anything, Floyd. Just thought you'd like to know I'm singing in the Summerfield Centennial. You don't say. What you gonna sing, Commish? Cool water? <laughs> Cool water. Floyd, I can see you haven't the faintest idea what this pageant is all about. Yeah, I just auditioned for Mr. Hoyland. He's the man who came out from Kansas City to stage the pageant. Yeah, he's quite a guy. Yeah? What do you know about him? I just know he's got his eye on me for the title role, that's all. You, Floyd? Did you go down and audition too? No, he came in for a shave, so I sung for him while he was in the chair. A singing barber. Yeah, regular figuero. That's me. <laughs> Lloyd, if you think you're set for the title role, you're mistaken. Oh, yeah, I had him charmed, Commish. His whiskers come off like wet wallpaper. <laughs> Lloyd, I'm going to sing the role of Captain Summer. Is that so? He even had me practice Captain Summer's song. 
In summer feel I take my stand to live and die on this dear land. He had me sing that, too. You. Oh, here comes the judge. Yellow Horace. In Summerfield, I take my stand to live and die in this dear land. <laughs> you too? What do you mean, me too, Gildy? I just auditioned for the part of Captain Otto K. Summer. You judge with that shiver in your voice, you don't sound like Summer. You sound like a cold winter. <laughs> Commish thinks he's going to play the captain. You, Gildy, you're too big to play Captain Summer. But you might be his horse and let me ride you in piggyback. <laughs> Very funny, Judge. But I'm going to be Captain Summer. I'm going to be Captain Summer. I know I'm going to get the role. You... The pageant's going to be outdoors, and my voice carries. You can say that again. It never stops. <laughs> oh, balderdash. That's better than sounding like a bullfrog in a well. Who sounds like a bullfrog? The telephone. No, I, I'll answer it. I'll answer it. I pay the rent. Very well. You nosy old goat. Floyd's Barbershop's your nickel. Oh, hello, Marjorie. Yeah, he is. Commission, it's for you. For me? It's your niece. You Marjorie? Uh -huh. I wonder what she wants. Hello, my dear. Uncle Mort, I've been calling all over town for you. You yeah. have? Anything wrong? No, but a Oh, yes. He's in charge of the centennial pageant. What did he want? Well, he wanted to contact you before you made any plans for this evening. He wants to come over and talk to you. He does? Well... He made it sound very important. You, it is important. It means I'm singing the title role. That's all. What's this, Gildy? Oh, good for you, Rocky. Yeah, thank you, my dear. Goodbye. Bye. You, well, fellas, I guess you heard that. I heard it, but I can't believe it. <laughs> no, Floyd. There are plenty of parts in the pageant for everybody, and I'll see that you get one. I was certain I'd get that role. My voice carries so well. You don't feel badly, Judge. If you dye your hair and put a feather in it, you can be an Indian with Leroy. <laughs> well, I ain't going to be left out. What can I be, Commish? Floyd, you can put on one of your barber sheets and be the judge's teepee. Yeah. <laughs> Would Mr. Hoyland of Kansas City be coming out to see me? Why shouldn't I be the big cheese? Yes, Leroy, why shouldn't he? Okay, so he's a big cheese. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, Bertie? How many cups of cocoa do you think you'll need tonight? Uh, you better make a pot full, Bertie. Yes, sir. Cocoa, Unky? Yes, my dear. When Mr. Hoyland arrives, I'm going to serve cocoa and crumpets. Crumpets? Well, tally ho. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, that sort of thing impresses artistic people. And besides, the warm cocoa will keep me in good voice. No doubt you want to hear me sing. I sure hope you get your part, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, thank you, Bert. Yes, sir. You're going to throw the book at him, Mr. Gillsleeve. Cocoa, crumpets, and crooning. Yeah, I will, Bert. <laughs> yes, sir. That'll sort the lead part for you. Cocoa, crumpets, and crooning. Yeah, that's the idea. Mr. Gillsleeve will get the leading part because he's throwing the book at him. Cocoa, crumpets, and crooning. Yeah, all right, Bert. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know how you get the leading part? Yes. That's Bert. right. Cocoa, crumpets, and crooning. <laughs> Bertie's awfully happy for you, Unky. Yeah, Bertie's a jewel. Oh, that must be the guy at the door. I'll let him in. Not in that hop along Cassidy sweatshirt, Leroy. You better come upstairs with me, Leroy. Heck no, I'm going to stay and watch. I've never seen anybody from Kansas City. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Upstairs, Leroy Scoot. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Mr. Hoyland. Come right in. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a little chilly out. Yes. How about a cup of hot cocoa? Cocoa? You can enjoy cocoa and crumpets while I croon. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve, but that isn't necessary. You know, Mr. Hoyland, I'll be happy to. I know, but the reason I came Excuse over... Excuse me. Uh, ready! Uh, just be seated by the piano, Mr. Hoyland. The cocoa will be right in. Well, uh, you, you see... must be rather fatigued after auditioning so many bad voices. As a matter of fact, I discovered one remarkably fine voice. Well, I've been singing for quite some time. 
Uh, yes, yes. Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, this may come as a complete surprise to you. No, but... the contrary. I expected it. <laughs> I see that now. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, the reason I'm here is... Uh... Excuse me. You ready? You just put the cocoa on the coffee table. Yes, sir. Then I'll go get the trumpet. Good evening, Mr. Hoyland. Good evening. Yeah? Do you know, Bertie? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, she auditioned with members of the choir from her church. She did? Well, Bertie, you didn't tell me you auditioned? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> you have a lot of talent in your home, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, you well, Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, Bertie, I uh, wonder if you'd mind singing that solo for me again. I'd be glad to if it's all right with Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, certainly. Yes, indeed. You go right ahead. And then I'll sing. <laughs> I'll play for you, Bertie. Uh, thank you, sir. You yeah, wonder what's going on here. All right, Bertie. Go in the home, go in the home. I'm a go in the home. Quiet like some still day. I'm just go. It's not far, just close by, through an open door. Work all done, care laid by, one to fear no more. Mother's there, Father's waiting to Lots of folks gathered there All the friends I knew All the friends I knew But I don't get it. Bertie has a good voice, but she couldn't possibly play Captain Otto K. Summer. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just wanted to confirm what I felt all along. Oh? Bertie has a remarkably fine voice, and I'd like to arrange for her to study in Kansas City, if uh, she'd care to take advantage of it. Would you, Bertie? Oh, Mr. Harlan, I don't know what to say. I'm so excited. Wouldn't that cost a lot of money? Oh, don't worry about that. There's a foundation with money available to train talent such as yours. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, ain't this wonderful? What do you think, Mr. Gildersleeve? You are, yes. You are wonderful. Congratulations, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Bertie's going to study voice in Kansas City. My land. I bet them trumpets is burnt up there. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, that's what I came here about. Yeah, I see. Even Mr. Hoyland. What about the role of Captain Otto K. Summer? Uh, that requires a good baritone. You bet. That's what I was telling Floyd and the judge. I mean, go right ahead. I interrupted you. You were speaking about a good baritone voice? Yes, I couldn't find one in Summerfield, so I'm singing Captain Summer myself. <laughs> what a sneaky way to get the leading role. Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Here's some wonderful news for every one of you homemakers listening in. 
Now you can buy a neat package that holds eight of the most perfect slices of the most mellow-tasting pasteurized processed cheese you've ever eaten. They're called Kraft Deluxe Slices, and they're different, really different, from any other cheese in slices you've ever had. Because these slices are not cut from a loaf. That's right. These slices are formed by an amazing new Kraft invention, and they're made in a way that captures extra cheese goodness, a deep-down, mellow flavor in every perfect slice. Then immediately they're wrapped, eight big slices to the package, and sealed by Kraft. So every slice will stay perfect and protected all the way to your kitchen. This way you'll never find slivers or broken pieces in a package of Kraft Deluxe Slices. You'll find only perfect slices, slices that are easy to separate. Open that package and just see if Kraft Deluxe Slices don't come apart even easier than you'd peel a banana. You'll find Kraft Deluxe Slices in your grocer's dairy case, so look for them when you shop tomorrow and take home several packages so you'll always have some on hand for delicious snacks and sandwiches you can fix in a jiffy. You'll never want ordinary sliced cheese again once you discover Kraft Deluxe Slices. Let's get back to the Great Gildersleeve. One good thing came out of the auditions for the Summerfield Centennial. The impresario discovered Bertie. Now it's generally accepted that she'll go to Kansas City to study voice. What the Great Gildersleeve finds difficult to accept is that he's losing his housekeeper. Three days ago we had a housekeeper for life. Now we only have her for this evening. The heck with the house. I'm worried about the cooking. Leroy, you're always thinking about your stomach. I wonder what Bertie will have for our last dinner. Leftovers, I guess. She's been so busy packing all day. Yeah, Bertie's been pretty busy. But she's happy. That's the important thing. Gosh, Uncle, remember the good old days when Bertie used to come out of the kitchen carrying a big stack of waffles and a platter of bacon and eggs? Yeah, wonderful. Mm, and those swell apple pies with the big hunks of cheese? Yeah, and those big juicy pot roasts? Now all we got left is the pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll miss her, my boy. Oh, do you think she really wants to go? Well, Mr. Hoyland says it's a great opportunity for Bertie. And he wants her to start studying right away. And he's pretty persuasive. Why didn't he stay in Kansas City? The house will fall apart. Now, Leroy, Marjorie can take over. What good is she? She's going to have a baby. <laughs> well, you and Bronco and I will run the house. Oh, brother, it will fall apart. <laughs> Unc. Hmm? Huh? Isn't that Bertie's train ticket up on the mantel? You know it is, Leroy. What if that ticket should disappear? Disappear? What if that ticket should fall into the fireplace? Accidentally. Leroy, how can you think of such a thing? Besides, there's no fire in the fireplace. Well, I could light the fire and you could push the ticket off. Leroy, I'm amazed at you. I wouldn't consider that. Still... I could light the fire and Leroy could push it off. <laughs> no. I guess we're trapped, Tonk. Yeah, I guess so, my boy. Well, let's be big about it. I'm trying. Good boy. I think I'll go down to Peavy's and buy Bertie a nice going away gift. I think I'll go raid the icebox where there's still something in it. <laughs> What can I do for you this morning? Well, Bertie's leaving tonight, Peavy. Yes, so I hear. Well, I'd like to get her a going away present. Very well. Something pretty nice, Peavy. Yeah, how about this big vanity chest? It's the best in the house, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, the best is none too good for Bertie. Just charge it. Very well. Uh, don't tell any of your friends, Mr. Gildersleeve, but since it's for Bertie, I'll give it to you wholesale. Well, thank you, Peavy. The way I see it, a person going to the city to seek a career needs every advantage. You? You know, it brings to mind a young fellow who used to work for me. 
He went to Los Angeles to get on the radio. You did? He thought he had a voice like Nelson Eddy. But he didn't. He just had hair like him. <laughs> well, uh, did he get on the radio, Peavy? No, he's a singing car hop. Well, that doesn't sound like much of a career. Well, with that hair, he still might make it in television. Yo. You, why doesn't he give up and come back to work for you? Pride, Mr. Gildersleeve. When a person goes to the city and fails, it's hard to come back home. See? I hadn't thought of that. Of course, I'm not saying that's going to happen to Bertie. But... Well, if it should, it'd be a terrible thing, Peepy. It'd break her heart. I wonder if I shouldn't have a talk with her about that. Well, I'd hate to see a fine woman like Bertie stranded in the city. By George, it's my duty to have a talk with her. A lot of good voices that never get any place. Look at me. Yes. You know that with my voice, I could have had a musical career. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Baby! I didn't think of this before. It's my duty to point out to Bertie the pitfalls. It's a rocky road to success. Into that toilet. He's just thinking about a voice. I'm thinking about a human being. And this human being is a good cook. Bertie! I'm in the kitchen, Miss Gilsley. Yeah, I'll just put the bandage just behind this chair until I have a talk with her. I'd much rather give it to her as a stay-at-home present than a going-away present. Are you busy, Bertie? Just packing a lunch to eat on the train. Yeah, Bertie's going on a train to Kansas City. <laughs> uh, well, before you pack the lunch, Bertie, have you given this trip a lot of thought? Yes, sir. You, are you sure you're going to be happy? A lot of things can happen in that big city, Bertie. Yes, and Bertie's ready for him to happen. <laughs> you are? I got a new suitcase, new shoes, new dress. Mr. Gillsleeve, you looking at the new birdie. Yeah, I know that, Bertie, but... Yes, sir, you looking at the new birdie. I got my ticket and I'm ready to roll. Well, that sounds nice, Bertie, but about a singing career... Ain't that wonderful, Mr. Gillsleeve? I gotta pinch myself to see if it's true. Ouch! It's true! <laughs> <laughs> but, Bertie... Of course, if you don't think I ought to go... Oh, no, Bertie, it isn't that. Then what was you gonna say? Well... You, you step into the living room, Bertie. I want to give you your stay at home. I mean, your going away present. I put Bertie's suitcase in the car, Uncle. Yeah, thank you, my boy. We'll be ready to leave in a few minutes. Oh, Unky, wait till you see Bertie. She's stunning in that new dress. Oh? Yeah, I come. I hope I stun them in Kansas City. Well, I'm sure you will, Bertie. Gosh, Bertie, you sure look keen. <laughs> Thank you, Leroy. You'll write to Bertie, won't you? Oh, sure. Oh, we'll all write, Bertie. And after the baby comes, I'll send you pictures. Yes, ma'am. I sure won't see that baby. You sure you're going to be all right, Miss Marjorie? Oh, I'll be fine, Bertie. Well, what about little Leroy? Is he going to get enough to eat? You don't have to worry about that boy getting enough to eat. You just worry about yourself, Bertie. Yes, sir. Where's Mr. Bronco? I'd like to say goodbye to him. Well, he's working late, Bertie. He'll meet us at the train. Yes, ma'am. And... And... You well, it's still a little while for train time. Yeah. What do we do? You will just talk, Leroy. Well, why doesn't somebody say something? Uh, Bertie, you sure you have everything? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, how's the voice, Bertie? Oh, Mr. Gillsleeve, I've been so busy. I haven't had time to try it today. And I have to sing that song for him when I get to Kansas City. Oh, would you like to run over it once, Bertie? You're a good idea. I would like to have you play it for me once more, Miss Marjorie. All right, Bertie. Go in. It's not 
What's the matter, Miss Marjorie? Something wrong? Why'd she stop playing? What's the matter, my dear? I'm, I'm sorry, Bertie. I, I got a little dizzy. I I guess I'd better go upstairs and lie down. Poor little girl. I'll help you upstairs, Miss Marjorie. Yeah, I'll take care of her. No, I'll help her, Unc. You and Bertie had better go. Oh, yes, Unky. You haven't much time. Well. Goodbye, Bertie. Goodbye, Miss Marjorie. Mr. Gilsey? Yes, Bertie? I ain't going. <laughs> now, Bertie, Marjorie will be all right. She'd be very unhappy if she thought you stayed because of her. You go and sing. I couldn't sing a lick. You right? I, I got laryngitis. <laughs> oh, come now, Bertie. Yes, I got laryngitis. I couldn't sing a lick. I, I'm staying in on Mr. Gilsey. Well, you know we'd love to have you, but... And I'd love to stay. Excuse me, Mr. Gilsey, but I'd have to eat some water from my laryngitis. You're all right, Bertie. Yeah, I wonder if Bertie's doing the right thing. Thing that'll make her happy. Stay in the home. Stay in the home. Little laryngitis. She's singing like a bird. Well, she's happy. What a fine woman. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. You know, folks, if everyone at your house seems to favor a different kind of processed cheese, you can still enjoy the convenience and extra mellow goodness of Kraft Deluxe Slices. Because these big, perfect slices that are cut and wrapped, ate to the package by Kraft, come in five delicious kinds. There's Kraft American. Kraft American with scarlet pimentos added. Nut sweet Kraft Swiss. Kraft Brick with that deep-down rich taste and sharp Old English brand. Get several so everyone can enjoy his favorite for quick snacks and easy sandwiches. You'll find them in your grocer's dairy case, the five delicious varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices. Hello, Phoebe. Mr. Gildersleeve, what can I do for you this morning? Yeah, good news, Pete. Oh? Yep. Bertie didn't go to Kansas City after all. He couldn't leave the little family. My, my. I presume you'll want to return the vanity case. Oh, no. No, I said I'd rather give it to her as a staying-at-home present. And I did. Now, I'm no cheapskate, Pete. Yeah, I'm glad of that. You are? You see, I sold that to you wholesale because it was a going-away present. Yes, but... Now that it's staying in town, I'll have to charge you the retail price. Oh. <laughs> Peavy. Now, I'll just put it on your bill. Oh, well. What the heck? We still have Bertie. <laughs> is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Ted Von Elts, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality foods. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Hey, this is me again, folks. Before we say goodnight, I'd like to remind all of you how important it is that we attend and support the church of our choice. Especially right now, when certain forces around the world are trying to destroy the rights of mankind to his faith in God. Our churches are a vital part of our way of life. So go to church this week and take the little family. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Here comes that Groucho Marx on NBC.